Yeah, I, know. I, I stand on the other step, I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> you better not. Can you hear me? Yeah. Fucking hell, we've become the kind of assholes who stand out protesting with megaphones. Look at this. <laughs> what have you done? Yeah. Mega I was on YouTube one moment, look what we had out. I know, right? And the thing is, I've got a speech that's pretty fucking serious as well, unfortunately. Oh, fuck you! Yeah, right? <laughs> no, I agree. Fuck me, honestly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I'm now going to have to get here and give you a fucking serious little talk because we're actually, we've, you know, we're all standing here having a laugh. But this isn't fucking funny, is it? You know? Oh, God. This, this, no joke. <laughs> this should not be happening. Why the fuck are we criminalizing a comedian? I'm I can't, this is just so the volume is So I say turn on to 11. <laughs> right, okay, how's that? Is that better? Right, okay. Right. <laughs> Fucking hell. See, now I'm fucking nervous because I've never given a fucking important speech in front of so many goddamn people who are all staring at me. So, uh, go easy. No pressure. Right. So there's a question on everyone's lips. This question is so controversial that just asking it is to brand yourself... It's the brand. Uh, it's this fucking megaphone, mate. <laughs> Please start from the beginning. I can't put this in. Yeah, well. Right. start this again. <laughs> I'll do it in my time as well, so you go away. <laughs> Guys, share it. Go ahead to see this. Right. So there is a question on everyone's lips. This question is so controversial that just asking it is to brand yourself an outsider, a dissident, and a rogue. The question is about one of the most controversial speeches ever given in this country. It's a question with implications so grave that some consider it a monstrous thing even to think about. <laughs> the question... Keep it serious. <laughs> The question is, was Enoch Powell right? Yes. Yeah. 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 The short answer yes. is how many stabbings make a river? <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got to answer it. But the long answer is the answer to one politically incorrect line that Powell was quoting from one of his constituents. In this country, in 15 or 20 years' time, the black man will have the whip hand over the white man. I noticed you've all gone fucking silent after I said that. <laughs> fucking told you. As we have seen, to the eternal disgrace of the government's handling of the Windrush scandal, this has not happened. But something similar has. Our black Commonwealth cousins who came here 50 years previously have integrated very well because they have come here to be British. Yeah. 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 Powell's constituent was right to worry, but as the events have shown, 
in the recent furor of police indifference to a British lady called Jan Janiah English, even being black is no defense. The British government did not place the whip into the hand of the black man. It placed it into the hand of anyone who proudly declared themselves to be anything but British. Yeah! Our institutions are obsequious to any identity that stands apart from our own. So that when Janiyah received death threats for criticizing Islam, the police told her this could be avoided by keeping her mouth shut. And like any British person should, instead of being cowed in the face of tyranny, Janiyah stood up to be counted among the ranks of those of us who could endure this no more. All of this is a question of identity and values, because the former is defined by the latter. The British identity is grounded in our ancient traditions of liberty and tolerance, and all other identities that we exist in this country must also be so. Yes. 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 We did not need black people or Muslims to have ethnic tensions in this country. This country is built on ethnic tensions a thousand years old. Yes. Between the English, the Irish, the Scots and the Welsh and all the subdivisions thereof. Absolutely. Yes. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. Yeah, you're not bringing anything new here when you come over going, oh, well, I have something different. Yeah, we know. <laughs> These tensions synthesize themselves into a British creed that all identities, all beliefs are permissible, and it is the harm that is punishable, and that harm can only be done by action and not by words. Yeah! yeah. These identities and values matter. It was the identity of Muslim that allowed the men who formed grooming gangs to enact religiously sanctioned campaign of assaults against children targeted for their ethnic characteristics. White and Sikh girls were targeted because they fell outside of the Muslim identity and therefore warranted no moral consideration. What the men convicted of these crimes did falls directly in line with our definition of a hate crime, and yet they were not charged as such. It is one rule for one, and another rule for another. This is not an acceptable state of affairs in a liberal democracy. All citizens should be treated without distinction by the state. In order to fulfill Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream of a world where people are judged by the content of their character. <laughs> to do anything else is to encourage the proliferation of nefarious elements in society. People who earn their stations in life through means other than hard work and decency. It confers on a certain group a set of privileges not enjoyed by the rest. This will breed, breed, this will breed resentment of the kind that eventually brings out guillotines. Hate speech laws are incubating something very dark and very angry in this country. Tommy Robinson is not a racist, he is a warning. Yes. 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 Every time I meet Tommy Robinson and we walk around the streets, you see the same thing. Rough, working class men spy him 
They look around, and when they think they're in the clear, they go up to him and shake his hand and say thank you for everything you are doing, and then walk away like nothing happened. This happens multiple times when I see him. This is a problem. Yeah. 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 This is what happens when people are treated like second-class citizens. Yeah. Yeah. These people are not racists, but they are reacting to the perceived source of their oppression. It is not that the government has criminalized racism through the combined zealotry of the political class, but not just that, in fact, that they have criticized legitimate, sorry, they have criminalized legitimate criticism of an ideology that is not liberal, not tolerant, and places itself in direct opposition to the identity of the British. But they have gone even further than this, and they have now criminalized humor. Ron Little made a joke about the Welsh in the Sunday Times, about how a bridge across the Severn connects Wales to the First World. <laughs> a very good joke. This aroused the ire of the North Wales Crime Commissioner and numerous other paid Cymru idiots with cries of hate speech. <laughs> The politically correct inquisition against Ron Little shows us that we can no longer even have banter between the constituent ethnicities of the British Isles. And if we let this continue, the United Kingdom is lost. <laughs> ethnic jokes Ethnic jokes serve one purpose to diffuse ethnic tensions by normalizing the differences between ethnicities. Yeah! If we are not free to offend one another, we are not free to make the kind of ethnic jokes that strengthen the social fabric of this country. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Without the freedom to offend, we create a series of armed camps, each watching the others for any signs of transgression, both obsessed with defending the honor of their respective tribe. This can only divide a country by setting us apart from one another and making us strangers to our neighbors. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We need the banter to keep ourselves grounded and maintain this United Kingdom. Yes, absolutely. And unless we scrap all laws prohibiting insult and giving of offence, the problems we are facing will only get worse. Yes. Yeah. 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 Free Count Dankula, thank you. Yeah. How do I follow that then? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wherever Puritans have been sufficiently powerful, they have endeavoured to patrol all forms of civic amusement. There exists in this country a glowing class, class of tyrants who, like all authoritarians, hate the sound of laughter because they cannot control it. Yes. We may well have come from different backgrounds and contrasting belief systems, but our message here today is the same. There endures among us a shared confidence and esteem in free expression as the value essential to a free and flourishing society. Yes. Yes.
There may be some who feel today that the no. there may be some who feel today that the sentencing of Count Dankula is trivial and incidental. No. I invite such individuals to recall how minor and innocuous was the cartoon of Muhammad that left 12 alleged blasphemers murdered at their own desks. Yeah. Comedy is an artistic medium, and like all artistic expression, it lives on the periphery of the tasteful and the sanitized. It is true that some people speak coarsely, and that is because people who are not sheltered children know that it is not words but evil deeds that harm us. To borrow a line from Professor Jordan Peterson. To, to think is to risk being offensive. Losing comedy is a battle that starts the long, drawn-out crawl towards an existence of no expression at all. This is not an anecdotal case, but a knowing precedent imposed from the top-down diktat of the anointed elite, yeah. the high priesthood of vice and virtue, whose own idea of moral conduct is the uniform denial of rape gangs and the repeated failure to expel the worst forms of anti-Semitism and jihadist sympathy from their own mists. Yeah. Yeah. Progressives are beginning to discover that the public is tired of crybabies and self-appointed school madams determined to reframe political satire as hazardous incitement. When lyrics become too racy, books too sexy, words too damaging, you know you are not dealing with good Samaritans, but ill-intentioned propagandists. What starts as the moral police almost always becomes a physical action. Yes. Yes. It is the right of all those who call themselves British citizens to call, critique and laugh at any aspect of society they find unfit or unworthy of ridicule. Or worthy of ridicule. Ideas do not have rights, offence is not violence, we don't ban speakers and we don't burn books. Yeah. 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 There cannot be a double standard or despots will flourish and resentment will breed. If to think is to risk being offensive, then I urge you, ladies and gentlemen, speak out. Yeah. 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 My internet's not going to be too much. I don't know who you are. They won't know who you are. I will at the end. I'll explain who I am. Hello, can everybody hear? Hello? Can you all hear? My name is Helen Dale, and I'm a columnist for The Spectator. I suspect, I suspect a lot of you read my column about the Count Dankula case. And I suspect it's probably the first column from The Spectator that a lot of you have read. Please subscribe, it's a nice magazine. <laughs> I am, aware, I am aware that it is the house journal of British conservatism. And I am also aware that my party, the Conservative Party, has grossly let down the side of freedom. 
I wish to make three brief points. The first will concern guilt by association. The second will concern saving Scottish banter. And the third will concern changing the law. By which I mean section one, subsection A of the Communications Act 2003. Let me return to the first point, guilt by association. This morning, I got a disturbed message from a friend of mine in my constituency association saying, you're going to be sharing a stage with Tommy Robinson. You can't do that, it looks bad. To which my response was, I'm sorry, ideas don't become wrong because of who believes in them. Just because some of the people who believe in a thing that you believe in and also believe in a thing that happens to be true, as Sargon has already pointed out, Sargon, Carl, I'm not sure what he prefers, um, uh, has already pointed out, it happens to be true. It doesn't become untrue because somebody strange starts to believe in it. That's the first point. The second point, Scottish banter. I used to be a solicitor up in Scotland and I became very familiar with Scottish banter. It is very funny. (laughs) Scottish people are very funny. Their humour is one of the great gifts that Scotland has given the United Kingdom and the world. It is the reason reason that Scotland has produced people like Billy Connolly and Frankie Boyle. Even in the Scots law of defamation, there is a specific carve out for the Scottish tendency to take the piss. (laughs) 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 Say Scottish banter, it's worth it. It's probably as valuable as the Scottish Enlightenment in the long run. (laughs) (laughs) Finally, changing the law. Section 127 of the Communications Act 2003 was a reenactment by the Blair government as part of their many, 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 many laws. More laws were enacted in 13 years of Labour government than had been enacted in these islands from 1066 to 1997. However, when they enacted that law, it was a reenactment of an earlier 1935 law <laughs> that was meant to criminalise people who made telephone calls in the middle of the night and did heavy breathing down the phone. <laughs> Hence the public communication device. Telephone call. It was also meant to stop people calling the emergency services, ringing triple nine, and saying that Granny was having a Watusi on the living room carpet when she wasn't. So you didn't have the NHS sending all the ambulances out for nothing. But it is now the principal means by which the internet is regulated in this country is a much bigger joke than Count Dankula's silly little pug. There is another part to this that is also very disturbing for anyone who has practiced law in Scotland. And I will try to describe it briefly. In England and Wales, it is possible for the police to bring prosecutions. I was talking to this about this to some of the officers from the Met here earlier. In Scotland, it is not. In Scotland, prosecutions are brought by the, are brought by the Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service, because Scotland has got a Roman law criminal system. 
That's why the name is so strange. What was done here in Scotland involved police Scotland crawling through the country's very small Jewish community to try to find a complainant because they could not initiate action of their own motion. What it means is that more police time will be wasted, particularly in Scotland because of this procedural difference, but also in England and Wales where police can bring these prosecutions of their own motion. It costs time, it costs money, it wastes resources. We know there have been funding cuts. We know that the Met boasts about its 900 hate crime officers and says that, oh, we're not going, we're not going, but we're not going to worry terribly much if you get your bicycle nicked. As someone who has had her bicycle nicked, I can assure you it's considerably worse than being called a nasty name. <laughs> In conclusion, guilt by association needs to get in the bin. It's nonsense. Yes. Scottish banter is worth saving. Yes. And section 127, subsection 1, section A, needs to be repealed. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings a close to our set speeches. However, we're going to open the floor now to anyone who has something that they would like to bring to move to the front, and we will allow them to speak as well. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Mark Houghton. I am the online marketing uh, director for the Liberalists UK and small time YouTuber. There you go. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, share this video.